living on funds in the UK. And that's because it can be a lot cheaper than a luxury apartment. If you look at the green buildings on our right, the one with the round roof, the penthouse there once sold for more than four and a half million pounds. But some of the houseboats in this area, they can change hands for as little as five hundred thousand pounds. Now the money is not in the boat, the money is in the morbid where the boat lives, but it's still a much cheaper way of living in central London with a nice view of Tower Bridge. Via's dock, it's locally known as Dockhead Bermondsey. Some people say that dockway is where Charles Dickens set his novel Oliver Twist. Well that's actually where Walt Disney filmed scenes from Oliver the film. They say that dockway hasn't changed very much since Dickens' time. The only difference today is that people actually want to live there. And you're looking at over £500,000 for each one bedroom apartment. Also on the left we have Butler's Wharf. This is where a lot of tea was stored when we walked into London. And it's also where the first one million pound apartment sold on the banks of Thames. You'd be very lucky to find one that cheap now. The area behind Butler's Wharf, that's called Shad Thames, is where they used to store lots of spices. Now the only spices you'll find there for the boat that we're travelling on the London, London roads carries 250 passengers. If you're leaving us here, make sure you've got all of your personal items and belongings. Christopher Wren. It stands 202 feet tall. If we were to lay the monument down in an easterly direction, heading behind us, the top of the monument would stop at the doorstep of a bakery in Pudding Lane. That's where the Great Fire started. We're now passing through London Bridge, the fifth bridge to span the river on this site. It was opened by the Queen in 1973. Oh, off to the left here, we've got a sailing ship covered in scaffolding. This is a seagoing replica of Sir Francis Drake's ship, the Golden Hind. Now, Francis Drake circumnavigated the globe on the original. He stole so much gold from the Spanish that they called him El Draco, the dragon. When he came back to England, he gave the gold to Queen Elizabeth I he paid off our national debt. Now that ship's actually been around the world twice and the masts are being put back on today. It's getting ready for its next round the world trip. Now we're passing through Cannon Street Railway Bridge, the oldest and the ugliest railway bridge in central London. It opened in 1866. On our right is Brown Barge, it's got great containers which are filled with non-recyclable rubbish. Now, one tug will take four barges like this full of rubbish down to Belvedere, where the rubbish is incinerated and it's turned into electricity. We're about to pass through Southwark Bridge, opened by King George V in 1921. It's the mirror of its 
and least used road bridge to cross the Thames in central London. On our right, the building with the four columns is Vintners Place. Now, the Honourable Company of Vintners have got the undesirable job of testing all the beers, wines and spirits brought into this country. There's about a 10 year waiting list to join them. And I already know that. Off to our left is a white building with a thatched roof, a replica of Shakespeare's Globe Theatre. You can see Shakespearean plays performed there in period dress and costume from only five pounds. And that's excellent value for live entertainment here in London. Closed due to the escalating price of oil, it's now home to the Tate Modern, the largest collection of modern art in the world. We're just passing through the Millennium Bridge, locally known as the Wibbly Wobbly Bridge. That's because it was opened by our late Queen in the Millennium Year and then closed by the police because it wobbled quite violently. They had to close that bridge for two years. They spent millions of pounds de-wobbalising it just to make it safe. Now ahead of the boat we have the Blackfriars group of bridges. The first bridge is Blackfriars Railway Bridge. It was built by John Wolfe Barry and Henry Mark Brunel. This bridge replaced the old London to Chatham and Dover Railway. That was taken down because it couldn't take the weight of the modern day trains. The red columns ahead of us are all that remains of the old bridge. If they took the red columns away, it would undermine the foundations of the other two bridges. Now the next bridge, the red one, is Blackfriars Road Bridge. It was built at the request of Queen Victoria to commemorate a Dominican monastery that stood over on the right. The monks wore black habits, which is where we get the name Blackfriars. Through this bridge and off to our right, is a building of a sloped roof and a black spinneret. That's the old City of London School for Boys. It's where they educated many of our former MPs and Prime Ministers. Now, despite that, they do say that it was a good school. And Winston Churchill spent two weeks there before he was expelled for fighting. When it was designed, it was illegal to advertise on the Thames unless your company worked with boats. Because OXO makes stock cubes, they've got nothing to do with boats. They were taken to court. They argued it was merely a coincidence. The windows on their tower spelt their company name. Now the judge actually agreed with them. They've had over 90 years of free advertising ever since. I think they got away with a technicality something about gravy boats. <laughs> On our right, we're passing Victoria Embankment. The embankment was built by Joseph Bazalgette in 1868. The Victorians encroached on the river, which allowed them to build the sewer system we still use today, and parts of the underground network as well. On the embankment, we've got that stone arch. That's Temple Stairs Arch. The western boundary, for the city of London, we have just left, and the city of Westminster, we have just entered. Now, also on the embankment, we've got the green lions with the rings. Lots of people say they're for mooring boats, but the Victorian police would use them to predict a flood. The police would look over the embankment wall on a high spring tide. <coughs> they would gauge the water level against the lion's manes to work out if London was at risk of flooding. They used to say, if the lions are drinking, London's sinking. And they also used to say, if the lions' heads are completely ducked, then London is well and truly flooded. Now, on our left, we're passing a large concrete building. That's the National Theatre. It was voted the ugliest building in London for over 10 years. That was until somebody finally built an uglier building down river in Woolwich, which is actually a Tesco. This area on our left is a South Bank Centre. We have over 5,000 performances throughout the year and some excellent street food markets as well. 
We're now passing through Waterloo Bridge, affectionately known as the Ladies Bridge, because it was built by the Women's Land Army during the Second World War. The ladies built the longest bridge in central London, just under a quarter of a mile. It's also one of the only in central London police in Egypt in 1500 BC. It was given to us by a grateful Egyptian viceroy called Muhammad Ali. That was after British victories over the French at the Battle of the River Nile. If you look at the Sphinxes, they're facing the obelisk, admiring it. But traditionally, Sphinxes are guardians, so they ought to be facing away. By the time the Egyptians told us it was wrong, the concrete had dried, and it's remained the same ever since. Not many people know that, but I do, and I tell everyone. We're about to pass through Charing Cross Railway Bridge. There are also two footbridges here. We have the Golden Jubilee Walkway and the Hungerford Footbridge. These were added to commemorate Queen Elizabeth II's Golden Jubilee. Through this bridge, off to our left, we have London's number one tourist attraction, the London Eye. Now, the Eye opened in the millennium year. It was sponsored by British Airways. They sold the Eye because it wasn't making them enough money. But on a sunny day here in London, the Eye can make up to £16,500 in only 30 minutes. So I've got no idea what kind of money they wanted to make. But apparently that wasn't enough. You can't see Big Ben. That's the Elizabeth Tower, formerly the St Stephen's Tower. And the clock is the Great Clock of Westminster. Now Big Ben is only the bell inside that tower that chimes on every hour. Big Ben was cast in Whitechapel. It weighs 11 and a half tons and it is slightly cracked like many of the MPs. <laughs> now we're turning the boat to make our way alongside Westminster Pier. If anybody wants to head back down river, we have boats departing from boarding point B, B for boat, every 30 minutes. They leave on the hour and half past the hour.